There's a thing in Betaflight, in later versions of Betaflight, called derivative method, and the two options are error and measurement. What is that all about? Let's talk about it. The short version, for people who don't want to go into too many details, is that derivative from error gives you slightly sharper stick response with slightly rougher motors, and derivative from measurement gives you slightly uh, softer stick response with slightly smoother running motors. It's been suggested by Boris that maybe racers would prefer derivative from error and maybe acro flyers would prefer derivative from measurement, but of course, you know, everybody's different and everybody has different preferences. The thing you need to know is that a PID controller is based on measuring the difference between a set point and an actual measured value. And a PID controller's whole goal is to reduce the difference between the set point and the measured value. The difference between the set point and the measured value is referred to as the error. So for example, if you move the stick on your controller, you're changing the set point. You're saying the, instead, the copter should be pitching forward or rolling left or yawing right. And the PID controller looks at the gyro, which is reporting what the copter is actually doing. And then it calculates the error and tries to reduce the error. In other words, it tries to make the copter do what you're commanding it to do. Conceptually, this is pretty simple. Mathematically, this is pretty complicated and involves some calculus. But we're not going to go into that because I stink at calculus. And you, so probably so do most of you. The D term is calculated based not on the magnitude of the thing that it's based on, but on how quickly the thing is changing. And that is a concept that may be a little bit difficult for you to grasp. So if we look at the P term, the P term is proportional to the size of the error. If the error is large, the P term will be large. If the error is small, the P term will be small. And the P term will change exactly as fast as the error is changing because it's directly proportional to the error. The D term will be large when the thing that the D term is based on is changing quickly, regardless of how big or small the thing that's changing is. Think about that, see if you can grasp that. Uh, it's a little bit of a weird concept. So if we take a look at this graph, in this case, the D term is being based on the error which means that when the error changes rapidly, the D term will be large, and when the error changes slowly, the D term will be small. And of course, when the error is not changing at all, the D term will be zero. The reason that matters is because in the moment when we change the set point, so for example, let's imagine that this is a thermostat and we're changing the temperature, and here the thermostat's at 138, and then in this moment, we change the set point to 140 degrees, okay? In the moment when that change in the set point occurs, the error changes very quickly. It goes from essentially zero to a very large number. And, and that causes the D term to kick. It's referred to as D term kick. The, T, the D term is very large for just a tiny instant in that moment when the set point changes. And then the, the, uh, the actual measured value starts approaching the set point and it does it relatively slowly, and the error is changing relatively slowly, so the D term goes back to being relatively small. Whenever the D term is derived from the error, then any rapid change in the set point will result in a D term kick. The other thing we can do is we can base the D term on the measured value itself rather than the error. Now, these two things are actually completely identical, except when there is a rapid change in the set point. So the difference between uh, D term based on error or D term based on measurement will only occur during moments when you are moving the stick rapidly, such as going into a flip or a roll. When you're moving the stick slowly or when you're not moving the stick at all, there is no difference between these two. When the D term is based on measurement, it's essentially the same, except that there's no kick. Now, how does this relate to our copters? If we look here at RC command, in black box, this is the value that is being used to establish the set point. So here I'm going to go into a backflip, and you can see that as my stick pulls back, we get these stair steppy values in RC command. And the reason for that is it has to do with the sampling rate of the incoming signal. The exact value of the stair steps, the exact width of the stair steps, depends on whether you're using PPM or SBUS or whatever, but there's these stair steps. 
the value changes, but it doesn't get updated until the next time the value is read. And these stair steps cause a very rapid change in the set point, which causes D-term kick if you're using measurement from error. For a while, it was thought that this was detrimental because it results in very rough motor traces and rough sounding motors. As the D-term kicks, the motors sort of, they, they, they don't exactly twitch, but you get a rough sound because there are these kicks in the motor output as a result of the D-term kick. And if you ever see kind of shark fin looking spikes in your D-term when you're moving the stick rapidly, that's a D-term kick occurring. I was thought that this was a bad thing, but later uh, Boris experimented on this a lot and found that the D-term kick actually made the stick response sharper because in these moments, the D-term actually the kick pushes the copter into the move more aggressively. And that's why D-term from error causes sharper stick response but rougher motors and D-term from measurement causes softer stick response but smoother motors. As I said at the beginning, which one's better? Well, it's up to you to decide, and you can go back and forth and see which one you like. I bet you that many people won't even notice the difference. I don't know, but uh, you can play with it. You can decide which one you like, and now you have somewhat of an understanding of what the difference is between D-term from error and D-term from measurement. Happy flying.